Welcome everyone, they call me Intro Tech Out and I'm back. The amount of subscribers that have joined since my last video is truly staggering, so I thank you all for joining me on the burning garbage pile that is YouTube. Today I wanted to go into more first person shooter design, this time delving into the FPS template I made. Like mentioned in an earlier video, I believe first person games are the way to go if you're new to Dreams and want to create solid games, because you won't have to create your own character and the first person templates control incredibly well. I never expected first person to work this great in Dreams, so I remember being shocked when I first placed MM's template in my level. It almost feels like a different game. But okay, as you may know, I created a first person shooter template called ITT's Advanced FPS Template, and I've been updating it since launch. These are all the features you can enable and disable at the moment. Aim assist, red aiming reticule when looking at enemies, melee, aim down sights, crouch, body visibility, sliding, Sprinting, Bullet Impact Force, Switching Firing Modes, Leaning, Making other puppets follow you, Pacifist Mode, this makes you put the gun away, and even a flashlight. Today I wanted to go in depth on how you can use this template to create something completely original. I'm going to do that by kind of doing an example walkthrough of the creation of an FPS character. The best place to start is probably the gun. Unlike most guns in Dreams, the one in my template is hitscan based, which means that there aren't any physical projectiles being launched from the front of the gun. Matter of fact, the gun is just there to look pretty. It has nothing to do with the shooting mechanics. I made a tutorial on how to create this if you're interested, but for now just understand that it doesn't matter if the gun is pointing up or down or even if the gun is there in the first place, you will always hit the exact middle of the screen. This was of course done so we can swap out the gun for another one. The community has made some great guns so far, so you can just pick one of them or you can make your own of course. I'm using an energy weapon for this tutorial. Always keep in mind that while some guns may look great from the side, they don't always look great in first person and the reason is often because they are too wide on the top side. In this case I think it looks fine because the gun is so futuristic. Also always check for hidden logic and delete it so you won't spend hours troubleshooting in the future. First thing you want to do when you've chosen a gun is label the weapon as friend so the gun clipping animation doesn't get activated. Next scope it into the arm group until a microchip appears next to the gun. This microchip handles the muzzle flash. Now try to line up the new gun with the old gun and delete the old one when you're satisfied. You might need to switch to play mode and back a couple of times to line the gun so it feels correct. Another important fact to keep in mind is that all the animations like recoil, aim down sights, reloading, melee, all of them take place on one scope level higher than where you're editing the gun position. I will call that group the arm group and the scope level where you can edit the gun position, the gun group in this video. But what this means is that you can change the position of the hands or even animate them without it having any impact on all the animations that were created for the template. In this case we can reposition the hands so the gun is held correctly without running into any problems. Now we can transition to the muzzle flash. For this it's handy to first move the existing muzzle flash a bit to the side or it becomes hard to see where you're emitting it when we eventually tweak the emitter. Let's change the muzzle flash first to make it appear like it came from an energy weapon. I recommend tweaking the use cycle of the effect instead of using the tint tool because by tinting you uniformly color the effect which will make it lose the bright white color of the flash itself. Now the muzzle flash is blue, tweak the emitter in the small microchip and line up the muzzle flash with the barrel of the gun. Time to test in play mode. It already looks completely different. We could stop here, but there are still a lot of improvements that can be made. First of all, sound. For gunshots I recommend layering multiple sound effects. That's also how I created the current gunshot sound. I found that they sound best when featuring these three elements. One, a loud, high pitched but short bang. There are plenty sound effects that you can use for this one. 2. A short low pitched thump. I recommend using short sub bass hits. And 3. A long lasting echo. I used handy clap and the difference with and without is incredible. But this all counts for realistic rifles. For energy weapons I don't really know what sounds best but they generally don't have the first high pitched bang I mentioned earlier, so I'll just remove that one for now. Sound is one of those things that takes a while to get right, but when you do get it right it adds another layer to the immersion. Now it's time to decide what kind of mechanics we will use. First up, aim down sights. 
Now I'm 100% certain when you put a new gun in the player's hands, the aim down sights will completely mess up. The energy rifle I've chosen for this video doesn't even have an aiming reticule, so let's quickly look at another example. There are often two reasons why the aim down sights doesn't look good. One, the gun is often not as straight as you thought it was when you first put it there, and two, the keyframe that handles aim down sights doesn't put the gun in the exact middle of your screen. The alignments of the gun can be fixed by scoping into the gun group again and slightly adjusting it, while the ADS animation can be fixed by scoping into the keyframe found in the ADS microchip. Fixing this can certainly be a bit tedious, but 10 minutes of work is worth the hours of potential playtime, in my opinion. Still, you need to always ask yourself the question if you actually need any specific mechanic. Because if you think about it, what does aim down sights really add to the game? The biggest upside to it is that it makes aiming easier, especially on console. But the biggest downside is that it can ruin the pacing of a game by forcing everyone to stop moving when they want to shoot. So, should you add ADS to your game? I'd argue that in most cases, it just isn't necessary. Still, I will admit that the mechanic is quite satisfying, so I'll also say that adding it into your game is totally fine. So do whatever you want. This is your world and you can make the decisions. Back to the energy weapon. ADS is clearly impossible because there is no sight, so we can deactivate the mechanic, right? Well, maybe not. See, what older games like Halo or the old Battlefronts used to do is zooming in. This allows you to hit faraway targets without stimulating using the mechanic constantly, unlike ADS. Let's make that. In the microchip on the head you will find an unnamed keyframe. This one does the zooming in when pressing L2. Let's scope into the keyframe and make the FOV even smaller. This will make it seem like we're zooming in even further. Next we'll just delete the ADS keyframe found in the ADS microchip and replace it with an on-off toggle microchip and connect the output of it to the FOV keyframe. Just clone one of the existing ones in the puppet. I still find it weird that I can't seem to get the switches and dreams to work like the on-off toggle in Little Big Planet. It's the reason why I've made my own microchip for this. If someone knows if there's actually a gadget that toggles on and off every time a signal is received, let me know. I mean, I'm certain it should be the switch, but it just doesn't work for me. Anyway, we need to replace the L2 signal with a button that makes the zoom toggle. R3 seems intuitive, but it's already in use for the melee, so it's time to shuffle some mechanics around. Luckily, I added a button binding function in the last update, so it should be easy. Since I'm not planning on using the flashlight with this character, I'll use R1 as a new melee button, like Halo Reach. Putting the zoom in on R3 also results in the problem that the lean function will now activate as a result of R3 being pushed, while quotation marks ADS is active. In this case, leaning is not a mechanic that fits well with the character anyway, so we can disable that one too. Next we need to make the gun invisible when zooming in. Make a new keyframe for this, because if you don't, the FOV change will be prioritized in the animation and the gun will become visible too late. In the new keyframe, just make the whole puppet invisible, just to be sure. Also connect this keyframe to the on-off toggle. A couple things remain now. First of all, the aiming reticule disappears when zooming in. We can fix it by deleting the wire that leads from the ADS microchip to the UI microchip. Second, we need to do something with the screen so it looks like we're looking through a futuristic visor. We unfortunately can't use a gradient effects tool because of my incompetence when creating the template. You're welcome. But we can use a text displayer. Add one to the microchip, type something, make it invisible, make the border invisible and increase the size of the text box until it fills the screen. Now with some adjustments to its opacity and color, we get the visor effect. The last important thing is to add a small sound effect when zooming in, but you can do that yourself. Of course you can also add multiple zoom levels, kind of making it a sniper rifle. But okay, one mechanic discussed, only 10 or so to go. The rest won't take up as much time though, I promise. Let's run down the list. First we have aim assist. Aim assist makes the sensitivity slightly lower when aiming at enemies, and since it's almost a necessity on console, I recommend keeping this enabled. I'm personally not yet completely happy with the current version though, because it's still quite hard to hit enemies. For now we can't really do much about it, except maybe giving the enemies actual hitboxes. Next feature, the red reticule when looking at enemies. We can keep this enabled. You can change the color when looking at enemies in the UI microchip, by the way. Next we have melee. Like earlier stated, all the animations take place outside of the gun group as to allow players to create their own. This means that the melee animation currently just rotates the entire arm group sideways. Let's make a new animation inside the gun group. We can do this in the timeline in the melee microchip. Of course you can make your melee animation as elaborate as you want, but let's just do a small punch for now. Really important to remember, not just for this template, is that when you make one body part move that is attached to other ones in a keyframe, you need to include every other one that moves as a result in the animation as well. 
So if you move the hand, both arm parts need to be included in the animation or things will start going horribly wrong. My recommendation is to turn all these body parts slightly with L2 as a way of including them. If the new Omele animation is really long, you might need to tweak the delay until able to shoot timer in the melee microchip to make sure the last moments of the animation can't be overridden by the shooting animations. Next up on the list of mechanics is Crouch. Crouch is generally not really something you have to tweak, so you can just let it stay activated. Crouch does have a tendency to look weird if you've also activated body visibility, so it's recommended to either turn off Crouch or body visibility. Talking about the visibility of the body, if you have it turned on, your shadow will often look weird because of the animations being in the arm group. You can for example see that when you use the old melee animation, both of your arms get removed from your body. If you really want to polish your level, it might be necessary to redo all animations but in the gun group so the shoulders never leave the puppet. However, there's also a slight problem when you make the body invisible and that's that some shadows can still appear. I of course made everything not cast shadows that I could, but everything you add yourself, like a new gun, maybe new accessories on the arms and heads etc, these will all have shadows turned on at first, so you will need to turn them off manually. The next feature of the puppet that I wanted to briefly discuss is the can shoot switch. Probably no surprise, but disabling this stops you from being able to fire your gun. You can temporarily deactivate the switch with a keyframe if you want to introduce new mechanics, like a grenade throw or something. Now we get to the slide mechanic. Sliding is a lot of fun, so let's keep it. Unfortunately we get some new animation issues again. So what's wrong this time? Well it would look really cool to have your gun sideways while sliding, like Titanfall or Apex Legends I guess. The problem is once again the scope levels in which the current animations exist. As to not repeat the same thing again, to fix this, recall keyframes need to be changed. You can find them in its timelines in the shooting slash recall slash ammo microchip. The new recoil animations need to take place in the gun group, so just select the gun and relevant body parts and move them back a bit. And the new sliding animation needs to take place in the arm group, so just turn the whole group sideways. Sprint is another interesting mechanic. Just like ADS, it's often not necessary to have sprint in your game. If you don't put sprints in your game though, it's good to turn up the movement speed a bit, so players won't feel too sluggish. That way you get something along the lines of Doom 2016. There's a timeline in the sprint microchip where you can change the sprint animation and if you don't want to be able to shoot while sprinting, you can use the can shoot switch again. Now we get to bullet impact force. This is pretty self-explanatory. If you disable this switch, your hits won't apply any force to the object you hit. In most cases, it's of course better to keep this on. It makes the gun feel more powerful and you can also do some nice game design things with this like, uh, I don't know, shooting doors open or something. Up next is the firing modes. Currently, there's an option for full auto and single shot in this template, though I'm contemplating adding a 3 round burst down the line. In this case, the weapon is clearly an automatic one, and the ability to toggle firing modes is something you would expect from a modern weapon, not really from a futuristic energy one. I'll turn off the ability to change firing modes and make the thing permanently automatic. The next two switches on the logic board are leaning and puppet active. Leaning is not something that you will have to tweak upon activating, and like mentioned earlier, it's not a mechanic that fits well with the gameplay style I'm going for here. I do want to mention the puppet activate switch. If you turn this switch off, the puppet basically gets deactivated, so the heads-up display, camera and force possession are no longer active. You can use this if you want to move the player to another puppet or controller sensor, like a vehicle for example. And just like leaning, the flashlight is also not something I activated for this character, and it also doesn't need a lot of tweaking if you choose to use it. You can find the light itself in the microchip on the head if you are interested. You can maybe play with the color of the light to see how the mood of your scene changes when you activate it. This leaves us with only one switch remaining. Pacifist mode. Just like the flashlight, this one was added in the latest update. Activating this switch makes the player put the weapon away. This is best combined with trigger zones to create safe zones. So imagine like an area where you can talk to NPCs before a fight breaks out. But right, those were all the mechanics. There are still a lot of topics I could talk about, but most of them are explained in the template itself, in a microchip called troubleshooting. Here I've left a lot of tips and troubleshooting guides if you run into problems. There are still a couple of things I'd like to mention though, that you can potentially use. First of all, a double jump. You can activate the double jump by tweaking the puppet itself and changing the double jump height. If you then use a puppet's interface gadget, you can apply sound to the double jump. Here you can throw in a jetpack sound or something. UI is also a topic I haven't yet talked about. 
I think most of it is fairly obvious, but you can of course do fun things like moving the ammo counter to the gun like you often see in sci-fi games. You can also change the health bar by creating a timeline with two keyframes. One where a text box is really long and another where it's so thin that it's almost gone. You can use the keyframes in the timeline already present in the UI microchip. A subtle trick a lot of games use is that they make the health bar disproportionate to the actual amount of health you're losing. This basically means that the last bit of health drains slower than the rest, making it more often feel like you barely escaped death. You can do this too in dreams by tweaking the blend type between the two keyframes. Of course you should also probably remove the displayer that shows the actual amount of health, because we wouldn't want to ruin the immersion for our players now, would we? Regarding multiple weapons, this is not something I've tried and I'm probably not going to try it anytime soon. The way I've built the template just makes it really really difficult and even if I added the function, the thing would probably become a lot less user friendly. If you do want multiple weapons and want to use my template, I'd like to quickly run through how I would do that. First disable as many features as possible that require complex arm animations, ADS especially comes to mind. Then put the second gun in the gun group that already exists and create two configurations of the puppet by using two keyframes. Each makes one gun visible, one gun invisible and moves the arms to the correct positions. With these keyframes you can also activate and deactivate some of the firing mode switches so you can have a semi-auto and a full auto rifle. Next create different gun sounds and make them only activate with one particular configuration by using AND gates. Same thing for the muzzle flash. If you go smart about it, you can also make a melee animation that works for both weapons. Something I haven't touched upon this video is reload animations, but they are pretty self-explanatory. I haven't yet created one myself, so I can't really give any tips, except for maybe watching some reload animations on YouTube. This can really help with making you understand why certain reloads feel so satisfying. One of the hardest things of multiple weapons will be the ammo count. But how you can make it so there are two separate ammo counts, you can figure out yourself because I think it's about time I ended the video. One last thing though, I've just released a new template a couple days ago. This is the spaceship template I've been talking about for a while. It's out of the box compatible with the FPS template, so you can immediately create games where you can not just fight on the ground, but fight in the sky as well. Check it out if you're interested. But that was it as far as I'm concerned. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around.